I often wondered uh, what type of people live in affordable housing until I got involved and saw that they're no different. They're professionals, they're ordinary people. What did you do as kind of a worker profession? I started out in the actuarial department, John Hancock. After college, I worked in New York City at a literary magazine. Just before I was 40, I went back to nursing school. So I spent most of my time in retail. I went to school nights for 12 years to get my college degree and my master's. Seems as if I've taught all my adult life. I like sports. He was a four-letter guy. I worked for three attorneys. One answered to the mayor and the city council. Well, I started in real estate when I was quite young. Then I started a band, took all my time. And then I got MS. Unfortunately, my husband passed away uh, the last year that I was teaching. I was just graduated high school and I came down with meningococci meningitis. I was in a coma for... Like three months. Yeah, three months. So luckily this place opened up for me. What did you think about affordable housing before you moved in? Do you think, because you wouldn't have known before you moved in, would you? We were working at the library. Doris was there and I was uh, in a little different department. And she said, you should really apply at the Ledges. It's really a wonderful place to live. So um, thanks to her, it worked out. I was involved with the Housing Authority in the city of Woonsocket, so I was aware of what to expect. I didn't really have one. Growing up in Hamilton, I was pretty sheltered. I knew because Rockport had the Millbrook and the high school and the ledges that there were, that people cared about us as we got older and, and maybe a bad divorce or death. And um, so it was a feeling of uh, a community that had made some provision. What would you want people who are looking at this to know about your communities. It's like a little family. I would like people to know that the residents are a full cross-section of the bigger community. We're all normal people. We've had productive lives where we, you know, we've worked at jobs, teaching, nursing, and whatever, or homemaking. We have re three retired nurses, two radiology technicians, two veterans. Whatever job you have, you're only offered so many things for towards retirement or pension. And I waited on a list for nine years to get here. How many people waited over three years? I think I was scared before because I didn't know what I was in for, I'm trying to find a new place to live. You're only one illness away from needing subsidized housing. There are options. You don't have to despair if you're not able to reach the standards that you read about in the real estate papers and it gets so scary about how, well, where am I going to live? What can I do? And to know that there is a community effort to be able to allow us to be ourselves with dignity. It's safe and clean and I'm living with nice people and I couldn't ask for more. I can relax now, got a nice place, uh, nice residents around me. I believe you should be kind to everyone. Treat people the way you like to be treated and we have to be reminded of that every minute of the day. I like where I am. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Living at Pigeon Cove Ledges, I can be myself. It's been such a blessing to me personally, and I think most of us, because we just have such a nice group of people. We just look forward to seeing each other. So that's been a life saver yeah. for me. I just never thought that I would be one of the people that had to live in affordable housing. I mean, a contributing member and uh, I think we're lucky. I think they're lucky to have us. <laughs>